Hey guys, just got another quick tip for you today. I wanted to go over how to do volumetric lighting in Cinema 4D using Redshift. So we've got this cool fractured sphere thing, and obviously we need to get some lights. So let's go ahead and go up to our Redshift tab, drop that down, go to lights, and we want an area light. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate this around, scale it down so it's kind of pointing outside this fracture here, scale a little bit more. And then I'm gonna to go to, this isn't essential, but I'm just gonna go ahead and change it from rectangular to a disc. You can do something like a sphere or a mesh light, but I found that volume lights tend to work better when they're more directional. So think like a flashlight or the sun. Let's go ahead and fire up Redshift and see what this does. All right, so there's definitely a light in there but it's not really doing what we want to do. So to get some volume light, we just need to go up to Redshift tab and go to Objects and add a Redshift environment. All right, right away we're getting some cool results, but um, still not quite what we're looking for. We need to rein in some more control. So go to our Redshift environment tab. Let's take a look at some settings. First off, the main thing that you need to worry about is scattering, and this is just the amount that the light is going to interact with your environment. So if we start turning this down, should start seeing some better results. By default, this is usually way too high. So we know what scattering does. We can turn that up and down. Of course, you can change the color of the fog if for some reason you wanted to do that. Still pretty cool. I'm gonna leave it at white for now. Then we have attenuation. So if scattering is how much the light interacts with the fog, attenuation is gonna be the thickness of the fog. So if I turn this up, you can see right away the background goes away because the fog is, you know, infinite. And we can keep turning this number up and even pass with the slider lettuce. You can crank this thing real high. Here, you can see how the fog is getting thicker. I'm going to leave this at zero. That's what that does. The best way to describe what phase does is that it's essentially what kind of fog we're dealing with. What's it made of? Positive values think you're tur turning it into steam. Negative values think you're turning it into smoke. Zero is, well, it's zero. It's just kind of a default look. I like adjusting phase because I feel like it feels less CG if I'm get, assigning it an actual reason to exist. In this case, we're dealing with fog, which is, of course, uh, water particulates. So I'm going to leave it at a positive value. Let's go ahead and start dialing in our look. First, I'm going to turn our scattering down quite a bit. I really like getting a good view of the background. There we go. Something like that. And then we'll go to our area light and let's go ahead and give this a little bit of color. When I'm working with lights, I generally like switching this to temperature because I just, I like working with real world values. Um, I'll go ahead and knock this down to 3,500. Yeah, that looks good. Got that nice blue and orange thing going on. But also, if you want to have a little control over the directionality of this light, you can actually go down to this parameter here, the spread, and turn that down. And what that's going to do is it's going to tighten it. So think kind of like a spotlight. In this case, I'm kind of happy with, you know, maybe somewhere in the middle. So now we have this interesting looking thing here. And there you go. Volumetric fog. Pretty easy and honestly really fast. As a side note, you may find yourself in a position where you want the volume light with lots of nice little rays and details, but you don't want to put any geometry in front of the light. And by default, the volume light is uh, pretty static and boring. That's actually really easy to fix with something called a gobo. And I'll show you how to do that real quick. So gobos work best with a spotlight. So if we select our light and we go down to our object tab and look at color, you see we've got an image uh, input right here. And all you really have to do is find your favorite image and in this case, I just went ahead, I went on Google and just looked up some caustics and go ahead and open that up. Now this is essentially a projector and you know, you can get, this might be fine. You get close enough and there you, you have some really interesting looking light and this does work for image sequences. So if you had a bunch of caustics, you could generate this effect and have it animate. But now looking at this, you might want the light rays, but you don't want it to hit your scene. Well, that's pretty easy. You just go over to your details and just like we said before, but instead of turning the volume all the way down, just turn down your diffuse and your reflections and honestly everything else. And now you just have a really cool looking volume light projector. 
I found that this is really great for things like backgrounds and whatnot. If you have, say, like text in the foreground and you just want to have some kind of little detail back there. So anyway, that's my quick tip for today. I hope it helps somebody and uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more.